Hi everyone, in this installment of Take Charge Now, I want to thank Cooperators. They sent me a press release based on a survey they did in talking to Canadians about financial myths that are out there and they want to dispel them. I'm going to add my twist on a few of them. You know, I launched this YouTube channel in November because it's Financial Literacy Month and my goal throughout this whole process is to help just one person understand their own personal financial situation a little bit better. Okay, so for now, let's go through the myths. The first myth is saving is safe, investing is risky. I don't necessarily agree with that. I do believe in stocks for the long run. I do believe in balanced portfolios. I get it. This is a period of volatility and there is a natural tendency to say, I'm going to move to the sidelines. I'm going to put my money into a savings account or guaranteed investment certificate. But what I can tell you, and this was from an individual who reached out to me not all that long ago. He was advised in retirement to do just that, move to the sidelines, protect his money. He said, I'm now 75. I've been retired since I was 60. But after taxes and inflation, my purchasing power has eroded. I have one piece of advice, Patty, I'd like to share. And that is, I should have had some money in the stock market. You may have to rebalance, talk to your advisor about it, but all or none, all in the market or all on the sidelines, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, here's myth number two. Single young people don't need insurance. Well, I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that you absolutely need to have insurance. But what I am going to say is that you need to ask yourself the question. I have often told this story, but my father passed away at the age of 36 of a heart attack. No one saw it coming. They did have insurance in place. That was the good thing. Did it make it easier on my family and my mom? Absolutely not. But financially, they got through a difficult situation just that much easier. And I get it. When margins are very tight, one of the first things to go is insurance. And it's the probability factor. It's going to happen to someone else. It's not going to happen to me. But it could happen to you. And by the way, if you're renting an apartment, do you have insurance on your goods in that apartment if something were to happen? Once again, something to think about. So myth number three is all about RSP season. And people believe it starts mid-February. Mm, no, the only date I really focus in on is March 1st. And that's the deadline from a taxation perspective where you can apply the benefits. But you can contribute all year long. And it makes sense to do that. The sooner you get your money in an RSP, which is a plan, not an investment. You need to invest the money in the plan to make it work for you. The sooner you start saving more money for retirement, you earn income on income. You get where I'm coming from. Okay, so myth number four now is those who invest in mutual funds have sufficiently diversified portfolios. Well, Maybe. Uh, I do like mutual funds. I'm a big fan of mutual funds and I like the professional management associated with them. But look at how many mutual funds you might have in your portfolio and drill down a little deeper. What are the top 10 holdings in each of those funds? Because you may find, for example, if you're in a growth fund offered up by a different provider or two or three, the top 10 holdings are very similar and you might maybe just be taking on more risk. You can be diversified with mutual funds as long as you have the right composition within your plan or your investment portfolio. Okay, number five, fearful commentary online suggests that Canada Pension Plan won't be there for you when you retire. Totally disagree with that. I've looked at the numbers from the actuaries it is well-funded for 75 years plus. It will be there for you. But what I would also like to add is that the government programs were never intended to entirely fund your retirement, but to supplement it. So you do need money saved beyond CPP, old age security, or GIS. You do need some, whether it's in an RSP or a tax-free savings account, or maybe you have an annuity coming in, you have a pension plan, 
you get where I'm coming from. You just probably need a little more than the government's going to provide. Myth number six, guaranteed investment certificates have begun to go higher in terms of interest rates on their returns. They're making a comeback. Should we be excited? Uh, sure, absolutely, particularly for savers. Yes, they've waited a long time to see these rates start to come back. But I'll go back to my earlier assessment. They deserve a place to be in your portfolio, but not your entire portfolio. And so this now gets me to myth number seven. Not everyone can afford a financial advisor. And I get it. But there are financial planners out there. People will self-eliminate and say, I don't have enough investment. I don't make enough money. And I would argue if you go into your financial institution, you will find someone who will sit down with you and help to create a plan. And by the way, having a plan isn't simply about the investment portfolio. What I like, and I am a certified financial planner, is that you begin by assessing your goals. What matters to you? What's gonna excite you? What's gonna cause you to save your money rather than out there sort of mindless spending? Once you establish goals, maybe you're going to tackle your debt. And I often will say to people, you can go one of two ways. You could pay down the debt that's costing you the most, the one with the highest interest rate, or maybe the smaller one. Because if you have five outstanding pieces of debt and a small balance on one, then you go to four, then you go to three, you get where I'm coming from. So debt management is part of financial planning. Investment, whether you're accumulating wealth or you're preserving wealth, but what about reducing your taxes or thinking about your estate? Financial planning is all encompassing and I believe every single one of us deserves a plan, our own plan. They're not carved in stone, Life will throw you a financial detour, but when you have a plan, you can see where to take corrective action. I'm gonna leave you with one last thought. When we talk about creating wealth, there's a big myth out there that wealth is created by having a lot of money. No, wealth is created not by how much money you make, but by how little you spend. Thanks for joining me.